There's no end to my talents. Garrick's Wormuloid. Welcome to the Briar Bothy. I... Hey everybody, how y'all doing tonight? It's Syndicated Pipe Club once again. I'm Dr. Allen, the Pipe Pirate, but you can call me Dave. And with me tonight, as always, we have our good friend Greg, the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Tired. <laughs> I bet. So, for those of you who may have not quite figured it out, we are still recording right after Greg has had his first child. Yes. And by right after, we mean the next week. So. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm actually about... Uh an hour away time-wise from uh, when my son was born last week. So it's about 11 o'clock uh, your time that... 11.02. Uh, 11.02. Yep. On the first day of fall. I thought so. And so what we're planning on doing tonight, we're just gonna, you know, just randomly uh, just uh, yabber on uh, about parenthood, Anything Greg's noticed in his now week-long career as a dad? Things like that, you know? Yeah, just kind of a... I thought it would be fun to just kind of, like, chat now that I'm uh, officially, you know, a parent. Which still feels really weird to say. <laughs> um, but I just thought it would be kind of nice to kind of chat about that for a bit and uh, talk about some dad stuff. Well... One of the things you get to look forward to now is you get to use all those dad jokes that you were probably using anyway, but now you're a dad. You, you, you can do it unironically. Yes. Yes. No, actually, for uh, one of my friends, uh, for his, uh, for just a, a fun gift that I got him after he became a dad was I got him a, a book of dad jokes to uh, uh, build up in his vocabulary, which uh, he appreciated it. I bet. Yep. Yeah. And let's see. When is this coming out? Let's see here. Uh, oh, this one will be around the 28th of October. So we're recording this literally a month early. And for those of you who may or may not be aware my own child is due airing time three days from now so we'll see so it may have already happened I don't know yet it's still a month from now because <laughs> my wife is of the opinion after her birthday which is on this coming Sunday October 4th um, that once that passes She's at the she's at the point where uh, you know it's safe for the child to be born because the, the lungs are fully developed and whatnot, and uh, she wants to go anytime after that. So you never know. But uh, with the gestational diabetes, they might. Uh, she was saying something about uh, anytime after the sixteenth. They may look at uh, inducing. That's what they did with uh, our, our current youngest, DJ. He was about 10 days early. Mm. We'll see how, how it goes because uh, they have her doing weekly non-stress tests. So every Monday she goes to the hospital and all the fun that goes along with finding a parking space and doing the COVID stuff. Yes, I was uh, I was thankful because my wife had to do a, a COVID test uh, when she went to the hospital, and uh, thankfully for me, I did not have to take that uh, 
super invasive, annoying test that uh, I've heard only horrible things about. I'm curious, why did they make her take a COVID test if she was there to have a baby? Uh, to see if she was uh, COVID positive. And if uh, she was COVID positive, it would have made things a lot more difficult for that the whole thing. And so we spent uh, a lot of time this whole year just kind of prepping for that moment, uh, just keeping ourselves uh, safe and you know avoiding any sort of uh, situations that would have uh, put us at risk. Hmm. Well, we found out that uh, as far as it, it goes, um, the way it'll work for us is I, I don't know about the COVID test. I, I, I don't know if they're going to have her take one or not. It seems kind of pointless because over here, it's at least in our area, it's taking a couple of days for the results. So it, it may not happen. Right. Um, they, I think with, um, with my wife, they had a, like a pretty good and speedy kind of, uh, like way to get the results, which is, which is good considering she was, you know, going into, uh, late well, being induced and everything. So they kind of needed their, res the results, uh, as quickly as possible yeah well for us it's really easy the the standard tests like the 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 questions they ask you every time the screening process i don't know if they do that over there every time you go to an appointment but we have it here where they ask you have you been out of the country or out of the, out of the province no we have not have you been in contact with any known covid people infected no we have not any symptoms that aren't regular for you? No. And the final one is, I can't remember, but there's like five questions they ask you. And oh, uh, if you... Is it a, have you taken any sort of medication to lower your temperature? No, that's not one of them. Although it probably should be. Yeah, that was one they uh, said it did at the hospital. Yeah. But anyway... So the way to work is uh, everywhere that I can go in the ho we can go in the hospital. Um, as long as you're wearing a mask, you're good to go. You don't have to. We won't have to wear the mask in the room. Um, although I don't know if it was like this for you. If I leave the hospital, I can't come back. I don't know why. That's the rule. I think there was something along those lines. Or it was between that or uh, you have to kind of get retested for everything. I, I, that's not a... That is a rule that I, I have heard at some places where uh, you can't come back if you leave. Yeah. Um, that's uh, what they got on, on us. Now, I'm not sure if, like, for example, I can, you know after the baby's born, you know, leave, like, say, to go home and go to sleep and come back the next day for a visit. I, I don't know. But we're not going to take that risk. I'm just going to stay there until she's discharged. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be fun. I don't sleep well in new places or places that are strange. Places I'm not familiar with. And... I'm pretty sure hospital chairs aren't that comfortable for sleeping. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, the first, you know, like uh, I was at the hospital a couple of years ago with my wife for a procedure that she had to get done. And uh, it, it wasn't that bad sleeping there. But the first night that I was there um, for this, like uh, it was not a very good night's sleep for me. And uh, considering the next day we had to deal with, uh, you know, the labor and I, you know, my wife was trying to do a natural birth. And so I, I was there to kind of give her support and, you know, kind of help her feel better and work through the contractions and everything. But like, it was difficult because I had slept so poorly and 
the position that I slept in, like it really made my shoulders like ache and were, they were really tense and I needed my arms to kind of be able to kind of massage her and, you know, kind of help uh, counterbalance the pain. And uh, yeah, that was not fun. Thankfully, uh, even though I didn't get a whole lot of sleep later on while we were at the hospital, I slept better with what I had and kind of learned some, uh, kind of ad adapted and, and figured out different ways to kind of get a little bit better sleep. Gotcha. We're hoping that if everything goes well, we don't even spend a full 24 hours in the hospital, but that will just depend on when labor starts, how fast it goes, because uh, we're not using an OB, we're using midwives, and uh, they're basically registered nurses, or registered practicing nurses, but well, they're basically doctors. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're using them, and uh, we get excellent. You get excellent care through through those those people. We we used them for DJ, our, our youngest, and. Uh, Basically, the idea is as long as she has the baby in time to be within discharge times at the hospital and uh, the kids sugar, first two sugar tests are OK because they test the kids sugar, you know, because the mother's gestational. As mm -hmm. long as those things happen, we should be out the same day. But if it goes past five o'clock we'll be there overnight and leave the next morning no. well at least it'll be nice not to you know hopefully to have the same amount of stay as, as that we had although i think we would have preferred having an additional day at the hospital uh considering everything we went through and you know they were helping us uh helping to provide a little bit of additional help for us, which, you know, considering, you know, it's our first time being parents, uh, it, it definitely helped us out a lot with that. But, uh, all because my son was born an hour before midnight, uh, we didn't get that extra day. Mm. I'm surprised. As you told me, you, you uh, ended up having a c-section mm -hmm. so I, i'm surprised they didn't keep her longer because um in in our case our firstborn also was born via c-section and he came out fine no problems you know it was all good he was born on monday and we had to basically beg to get her out on Wednesday. They wanted to keep her till Friday. Mm. I, I mean, I realize the healthcare systems or two countries are totally different. It's for sure. Stay that long would have been a hell of a bill for you. I'm, I'm sure you're not looking forward to getting the bill as it is, but... Uh, no, <laughs> especially since the C-section was not planned. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So I, I get that that's a little different, but still, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't want to keep her maybe just a little bit longer than that, just to make sure everything was closed up proper and all that stuff. Yeah, and the strange part was they actually wanted to ask her if she wanted to be released the day before that we were. So apparently they were that uh, confident in her uh, recovery time. But, uh, you know, we... Uh, my wife was like, no, we're going to stay <laughs> the, the allotted time that we've been given. Yeah, we'll take advantage of all of it. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, please change my child's diaper. No, I actually, uh, I did. It, well, the nurses definitely changed some of the diapers, but uh, I thankfully was able to help out my wife and took care of all the diaper changes while we were in the hospital. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So it's going to be an interesting few weeks for you, that's for sure. Because it's going to take about six weeks before your wife's back on her feet fully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
No, uh, we went to the chiropractor today and she couldn't really get uh, her normal adjustment. And, and the doctor told, uh, and our chiropractor told her that it would take about six weeks before he could really adjust her properly. Um, it's, I mean, it's been between both the baby and my wife, it's been kind of, uh, I wouldn't say stressful, but it, it, I mean, it's definitely been um, interesting in terms of like the things that they've had to kind of deal with and encounter. Cause like, uh, you know, with my wife, she had to be induced because she was uh, in preeclampsia. And so like, they've been kind of checking and monitoring her blood pressure and uh, I, and they spent a lot of the time during the labor monitoring her, her blood pressure and everything. And there were a few kind of spike moments, but uh, for the most part, she actually managed to do fairly well. Um, there was one moment where she kind of hit the numbers where they would have wanted her to kind of go to the hospital. But thankfully, um, you know, she, she talked to the doctors and it seemed like uh, they wanted her to kind of wait a little bit and her numbers went down, thankfully. And then with our son, it's been uh, a little bit of a struggle with, uh, you know, breastfeeding and getting him, you know, at, you know, back to gaining weight rather than losing weight. And, uh, but thankfully we've, there's a place close by that actually um, sells uh, donated breast milk. And, you know, they're a lactation uh, consultant and they've been, uh, you know, we've gone there twice so far to kind of help uh, help us out as we're you know developing and learning you know everything with uh, the breastfeeding and everything. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit for the first one. I, I remember that. Well, well, it really didn't for uh, for for my wife, but uh, it's pretty typical that uh, the first one it is take takes a little bit for everything to come in properly and whatnot. So. Um, I'd say, you know, give it a couple weeks at least before you decide to start thinking about, you know, um, formula or anything like that. But it sounds like you got a good resource right there really close by. So that'll help. Yeah. No, that's a, I've heard it. It's very common uh, for people that uh, like breastfeeding, you know, being like uh, one of the most challenging things that they've done. It was, it was challenging for my wife, but not because she couldn't produce because the <laughs> The kids were practically all tongue tied, so mm. um, it hurt. <laughs> and yeah, my, and, and that's part of the reason my middle my middle child has to go through speech therapy right now because he was so tongue tied that uh, when he was born he didn't have any mobility; it was completely latched down. So, oh, wow, that was one of those things. But that that's a minor surgery, but still had to be done. But that's one that's not covered here, a tongue tie. It just makes no sense. Mm. We got a lot of coverage, but tongue tie wasn't one of them. So I had to pay for that one. Uh, that's annoying. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was only like 500 bucks, but because, you know, there, there were still parts that were covered, you know, like the anesthetic mm -hmm. was for us was still covered. And there, there are a few things that, you know, the doctor could put through OHIP that were just general stuff, but. Yeah, it still cost us 500 bucks in a trip to Windsor, which is an hour away. Yeah. And we had to drop, uh, let's see, and Will had to be taken care of because we couldn't take him. And so, yeah, that was fun coming home with a screaming baby in the back seat for an hour drive on Major Highway. That was fun. Uh, that's, uh, that's, yeah, frustrating. Anyway, ours is uh, pretty chill. Like, he just kind of, like, conks out in the car. Thankfully, I mean, it was a uh, getting a little bit to the point where he was getting fussy on the ride home because we had a, a little bit of a trip to finally make it home. But uh, once we once we did it, you know, like all the car rides since he's been uh, very good in, in the car. That's good. How's he for sleeping? Is he going through the night yet? I know it's early, but sometimes, you know, I mean, on one hand, it's been pretty good for us because, uh, like 
on sat so we came home friday and saturday at one point uh i had uh, I, we just kind of had enough and we were so tired and exhausted and i was like okay i'm calling in my mom <laughs> and uh originally like we wanted to have like a couple days to kind of bond with our son but it was just like no let's let's bring in my mom and, and get her to help and so she's actually probably held the my son more here than I have uh, since we've been home. But I, I definitely, you know, take my shifts to kind of let them both sleep. Um, when he is with, he seems like anytime I see him with the other two, he seems to sleep quite a bit. Um, but when he's with me, I don't know what it is. And it's usually like late at night when I have him that uh, he's a little bit fussy. Uh, you know, I try to put him down in the bassinet to try to get some sleep and he'll sleep for a little bit, but, uh, you know, then you'll like wake up and hear his kind of like warning cries of like, okay, I need some, I need to be held or, you know, to have my, uh, you know, pacifier or I am going to make you regret it. So, um, I will see how tonight goes, but, uh, for the most part, he's been, not the best sleeper for me, but for everybody else, he's been pretty good. Yeah, okay, so from the sound of it, definitely not sleeping through the night yet. I know that that was an early thing, and typically you don't get that, but I was just curious because our last one, DJ, he started sleeping through the night, like, immediately. And by that, I mean he would sleep, like, she would feed him, put him down, he'd sleep for six hours before he's up again. So... That's basically a night's sleep. That's pretty much all I get now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, before I was getting about uh, four hours sleep or less, but uh, thanks to my mom, I've had a couple nights where I've hit like six to seven night, uh, hours. So I'm trying to take advantage of it while I can. I'm just, I'm thankful right now that uh, I can be a, a bit of a stay at home dad and I don't have a work to worry about because I couldn't imagine going back to work next week already with uh, adjusting to this new life of being a dad and uh, and dealing with his sleep schedule so I, I think I would kind of go crazy and not, on, not just and on top of all that your wife's healing from a, a major surgery and she's healing from the major surgery. She's also pumping and trying to get her breast milk to come in and uh, all this stuff, you know, one thing after another. And it's, you know, you don't, going into fatherhood, like you don't, you know that you're going to be up late, but you don't realize like everything that's kind of going to go into it mm -hmm. until you're there. Even something as uh, crazy as like dressing my child, like, I'll get him it, like it's like the most traumatic part of the day is getting him dressed <laughs> like and uh, like I, I finally figured out a couple of tests uh, like a couple of uh, tricks to make it less traumatic but I uh, I'm in a Google Hangouts chat with uh, two of my friends from college and uh, I just messaged them like the other day I was just like you know does it ever get to the point where you are less of a monster for uh, feeling like a monster for, you know, putting your kid through the ordeal of getting them dressed? And uh, they had some pretty funny responses for that. But uh, yeah, right now, like, that's like the, the part I dread is like, okay, how do I get this on you without you having like a meltdown? Yeah, and there is no way to do it. They will just melt down no matter what you're trying to put on them. But, well, I was lucky. I had already had previous experience with two sisters that are significantly younger than me. Mm -hmm. So I went into first time parenthood already knowing that you, the babies are very resilient and you basically can't hurt them when you're trying to dress them, even though it looks like you're contorting them in weird ways. And they yeah. should, should, yeah, exactly. And then they, they should be hurt, and but they're not. They're not. They're fine. 
I'm just like, oh my goodness, like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get to experience that, but that's okay. I'd, I'd I would with with the having the C-section wife as well for the first one, knowing that you know I knew how to change a baby and put the clothes to, to put the clothes on without any problems. It really helped. Yeah, I threw a couple of the people. Well, actually, it was my um, pastor and his wife showed up uh, the next day after Will was born, and just to see how we were doing and whatnot, and. Uh, I'm right in the middle of dressing him. You know, hey, how you doing? Getting him ready. And he goes, man, Dave, like you just did that. Like, like it was nothing. I remember when I was, you know, he, he related how, you know, like you just said with his first, with his first boy. And I'm going, well, you also got to remember, you know, I, I've had practice. I, I know how to do this. Oh well, yeah. So big families do help. Mm-hmm. Although For sure. to be quite honest, I didn't want to have the same size family that I came from, but, I guess I do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, unfortunately for us, we're the first ones on my side of the family. They have a a child, so. But uh, I'm getting enough responses from like uncles and uh, and friends to to let me know that uh, you know I'm not I'm not doing a horrible job. No, thankfully. not at all. Not at all. Sounds like you're doing just fine for first time dad with no experience yeah. changing little ones. It does get it does get easier and eventually, you know, they get bigger and they can help you. Mm-hmm. So it it'll be fun. Yeah, no, it's uh I know I know every stage has its own challenges. Um with this one it's just you know, feeling like I am this like huge giant and I have this fragile, you know, thing that is completely dependent on me, you know, in my, my two hands, like it makes you realize just how, you know, fragile we are when we start out. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that any of us are get to the point where we're here now. Yeah. First off, it's very hard if you uh, are in the know about it and they the doctors usually tell you it's very like the odds of somebody getting pregnant at first off the conditions just have to be just perfect for that to happen mm-hmm. and then you know you're born and you're this little fragile thingamajigger called a baby and uh, you have to get through that and then after that you uh, you know have to get through life without your parents killing you because you've angered them or you know just accidents happen that can hurt or maim like getting through life just in general is a miracle because even at as grown-ups we're not we're not uh, invincible either i mean right like the, a bump to the head wrong can kill you so mm-hmm. just if you make it through life and die of you know old age Consider it a win. No, absolutely. No, I, <laughs> and that makes me just think too of just like, you know, the moments of, uh, you know, when you're growing up, those like uh, close calls you have where, uh, you know, one, if one thing would have gone wrong, like that could have been it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be so hard once they run once my kids running around and uh i'm not going to be able to watch at least with here i can just be like okay i'm putting you in the bassinet and i don't have to worry about you right now yep the advantage i have is i've already done this three times and all the safety features that were built in for the kids before they were able to walk down get up and down the stairs on their own are still here they're still as I built them into the into the into our into our house so yep there's still there's there's a gate we can lock the baby right into the living room and it can't get out there's a gate to keep it out of the kitchen we've got the baby gates to block the basement and upstairs stairs we've got all the stuff so we're, we're, we're pretty good in that regard anyway yeah uh. 
I'm gonna have to baby proof the house eventually. <laughs> or you could just, you know, do what our parents did and, you know, let us pull a TV on our heads and learn from experience. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, I don't want to over, like, overdo it, but, uh, you know, definitely things like, uh, you know, the sink cabinet where all the, the colorful liquids are. Yeah, all the candy and the pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm guessing that uh, you'll be fine. I think so. We certainly have enough. You know, the benefit too of, uh, you know, there's some downsides of being the first ones to be part of a, uh, you know, to be the, on the side of the family that are doing it the first time. But uh, at the same time too, there's a lot more enthusiasm about it and, and everything. So uh, there's that benefit. Yeah, we kind of did that on both sides of the family. So like when my, my oldest son was born, he was the first grandchild for both sets of parents. So I had that doubled. And now, since we're having a daughter, it's gonna happen again. Because nice. it's not the first, necessarily the first grandchild, but she is the first granddaughter on both sides. So you can just imagine that what happened with Will is gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. But we do have a little bit of an advantage this time. COVID happened. So the visits will have no choice but to be limited. <laughs> so I, f I just found a silver lining to COVID. Believe it or not, people. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, it's been frustrating for us just because if I could, I wish there was more of a chance for us to, uh, have my family see our, our grands, uh, you know, the, the baby, uh, you know, as much as they want to. The nice thing was uh, today, um, my grandmother and my father were able to drive up and uh, visit, uh, visit today. And so my grandma got to hold uh, her first uh, great grandchild in her arms today. Nice. And, uh, and that was uh, really special to be able to do that. You know, like it's, you know, she's been such a big part of my life that to be able to do that for her, it's just been uh, a fantastic feeling. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention this, but we're recording... Um, again, for the, this episode as well as last week's episode uh, on the 29th of September. But today, as a matter of fact, happens to be my grandma's birthday. She's 96. And, you know, if anyone's going to make it to 100, she's only got four years to go. She, right. she, she said, like, seven years ago when, when Will was born, that she wanted to live long enough to see these grandkids grow up a bit. I'm sitting going, well, you're 96 now. We're having a having a fourth. You're going to have to make at least 110. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but she's got a she has she had a, a cousin that made 105. So it's possible mm -hmm. our family is long lived in that particular regard. Yeah, my grandma is uh, 95. I believe her mother lived to uh, 94, and I, I got to know her, uh, um, you know, before she passed. Um, but I, you know, my grandma's still, you know, she's she's definitely slowed down quite a bit, but uh, you know, she still looks good for her age. So I'm I'm hopeful that she'll be able to meet all of her future great grandchildren. Well, and me personally, I'm just hoping that, you know, I got a good portion of those genetics that, you know, keep the mind 
mine going and lucid mm-hmm. and whatnot because man i would want to get up you know into the 90s and all of a sudden not be able to at least think for myself clearly right i mean you get you get to that age and, I, and you're gonna need help it, it's just that simple you get in the 90s you're gonna need help you're not gonna be able to drive yourself anywhere anymore you're not gonna be able to move as quick you're gonna sleep more you're basically gonna turn into a baby again hmm That's a good point. But anyway, I think we've kind of probably bored everybody. If, if you're still watching now at this point, 35 minutes in, God bless you. Because this is not really a, uh, a topic that you know people who aren't parents are probably going to be interested in. But if you aren't a parent and you're still watching, thank you. That's insane. No, it's uh, no, it's funny because like, uh, like I, I'm the last one of my group of friends to to finally have a kid, and once I finally, uh, you know, last week, once my son was born, I felt like I was finally a part of this group that I didn't know existed. In terms of like, you know, like a, you know, the social status or like social group. So it's been. It's been kind of, in, you know, not that it's official or anything, but just, you know, now that I, I'm a father and, you know, the the conversations I have with like friends and everything are different now from the mm-hmm. ones that I had. And, um, and I remember too, like last year I was hanging out with uh, my two friends that are in the, the Google Hangouts um, chat and like they we were all hanging out and, you know, you know, chatting about games and stuff. And then they started kind of talking about like fatherhood and stuff and I kind of had to be a little bit of the third wheel in the conversation for a while, but uh, I mean, they were good enough to kind of include me on, on some stuff, but uh, there was obvious stuff that you know I just couldn't relate to because I wasn't a dad yet. But, but now, like I'm, you know, even if it's stuff that I like toddlers or, you know, when they're like a bit older, there's some stuff that I haven't, you know, gone that to yet that I may not be able to provide as much input but at least uh, I know enough to be able to be part of the conversation now. For sure. And with that, I think it's time to put a wrap on things. Yes. So if you would like to keep up with us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter or any other social media platform, really, at DRAllen201. You can follow the show on Twitter at Syndicated Pipe. Greg, where can the people follow your adventures as a dad? Ah, uh, you can follow my uh, exploits as uh, a dad on Twitter at uh, the underscore Badger Piper and on Instagram at, uh, at the Badger Piper. You can also check out our website. It is fandompipes.wixsite.com slash syndicated pipe club. And of course, right here on YouTube, at uh, Syndicated Pipe Club, link directly to the channel will be included for those of you uh, who are listening to the podcast version. And, well, I'll throw it down in the uh, description anyway, even though you're already here. Because, you know, it's a shorter link now. Yes. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel and uh, ring that bell to be notified whenever we update the channel. And also be sure to check out all of the different podcasts of- uh, programs out there to follow us and follow the podcast version of the show. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Android Podcasts, uh, all sorts of different podcasts. Check it out. And if you just want to go old school and send us an email, you can always get in touch with us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. And for those of you who are just tuning in to us over on the Syndicated Play Club YouTube, just so you know, that is because Greg and I used to do a podcast called Out of the Speed Force, and we just decided to recycle the email from that. So, that's another one in, in the bag, as it were. Any uh, final thoughts before we uh, call it a night? No, because I need sleep. Yeah, me too. And with that, everybody, have a good week, good entertainment, and we'll see you next week. Unless I'm, you know, having a baby, then 
you won't see us next week. You'll see a recording right. of us next week. Yes. Have a good night, everybody.